come back with another video. God does not exist. The philosophy is naturalism. Sean Carroll and Lex Fridman. Fridman. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. What do we have here? You are a uh, you're a believer of the mechanistic universe. Uh, you're a naturalist, and as you've mm -hmm. described, a poetic naturalist. That's right. What's the word poetic? What is naturalism, and what is poetic naturalism? Naturalism is just the idea that all that exists is the natural world. There's no supernatural world. You can have arguments about what that means, but I would claim that the argument should be about what the word supernatural means, not the word natural. The natural world is the world that we learn about by doing science. The poetic part means that you shouldn't be too, I want to say fundamentalist about what the natural world is. As we went from Newtonian space-time to Einsteinian space-time, something is maintained there. There is a different story that we can tell about the world. And that story in the Newtonian regime, if you want to fly a rocket to the moon, you don't use general relativity. You use Newtonian mechanics. That story works perfectly well. The poetic aspect of the story is that there are many ways of talking about the natural world. And as long as those ways latch on to something real and causally efficacious about the functioning of the world, then we attribute some reality and truth to them. So the poetic really looks at the at the uh, let's say the pothead questions at the edge of science is more open to them. It's doing double duty a little bit. So that's why it's confusing The the more obvious respectable duty it's doing is that tables are real. <laughs> Even though you know that it's really a quantum field theory wave function, right? Tables are still real. They're a different way of talking about the underlying deeper reality of it. The other duty it's doing is that we move beyond purely descriptive vocabularies for discussing the universe onto normative and prescriptive and judgmental ways of talking about the universe. This painting is beautiful. That one is ugly. This action is morally right. That one is morally wrong. These are also ways of talking about the universe. They are not fixed by the phenomena. They are not determined by our observations. They cannot be ruled out by a crucial experiment, but they're still valid. They might not be universal. They might be subjective, but they're not arbitrary. And they do have a role in describing how the world works. So you don't think it's possible to construct experiments that explore the realms of morality and even meaning. So those are just those, those are subjective. Yeah. They're human. They're personal. But do you think that's just because we don't have a, uh, the tools of science have not expanded enough to incorporate the human experience? No, I don't think that's what it is. I think that what we mean by aesthetics or morality are we're attaching categories, properties to things that happen in the physical world. And there is always going to be some subjectivity to our attachment and how we do that. And that's okay. And the faster we recognize that and deal with it, the better off we'll be. But if we deeply and fully understand the functioning of the human mind, won't be able to incorporate that? No. That will absolutely be helpful in explaining why certain people have certain moral beliefs. It won't justify those beliefs as right or wrong. Do you think it's possible to have a kind of general relativity, but that includes the observer effect where the human mind is the observer? Sure. So, sort of like how we morph uh, in the same way, gravity morphs space time. How does the human mind morph reality and have a very, uh, thorough theory of how that morphing actually happens? That's a very pothead question, Lex, but I'm sorry. that's, <laughs> but those are things possible. <laughs> but the answer is yes. I think that there's okay. no, right. I, I think that we're part of the physical world and the, the natural world. Um, Physicalism would have been just as good a word to use as naturalism, maybe even a more accurate word, but it's a little bit more off-putting. So I do, I did want a snappier, more attractive label um, than physicalism. I expected him to elaborate a little bit more on that. Like, okay, God does not exist. The philosophy is naturalism. 
whatever naturalism we say a better word would be is materialism but it's off-putting that's not by coincidence though that's created too um i get what people saying too when they try to be open-minded about it and um good and evil is subjective I see that, but I see the other part too, of you imposing your will on someone else, you inflicting pain on them. Let's go with flaying, skinning someone alive, you inflicting pain on them, you imposing your will on them, you inflicting pain on them that they feel. Ironically, you can't take it yourself, you will be screaming like a little bitch. But you got the gall to go and do this to a whole nother person. And they got dreams and aspirations and want to make it back home and see their mother smile again. And it's coming to a short stop due to someone feel that they free will can impose on someone else will for themselves. I feel like that completely toss the matters of good and evil to the waste inside because think about that whole another person they got their own dreams and aspirations and their mom want to see them again and you take that away from him and his mother and you can't even take the pain yourself that you're inflicting on someone else and then you go about and thinking you could just take other people and do what you want with no I believe that you do with thy will as long as you're not imposing your will on someone else or if an area was perfectly fine and you don't come and fuck it up. And even deeper with good and evil being subjective, it's been proven. You think positive with the corresponding feeling and you got the vision for it, those things will happen. If you think negative, you can think yourself into depression, anxiety, and just even the, the downsides of things, the negativity, or even heartbreaks or whatever, and you be at a low vibrational vulnerable state to where you're open to evil because you feel weak and depleted. And that can deteriorate your health if you feel bad. It can push you to do something that you wouldn't do in a clear state of mind, being suicide or whatever. So I see what they mean, that good and evil can be subjective. But no, where I draw the line is you impose your will on someone else and they actually feel what you're doing to them. So it is a good and evil. Um, subjectivity. Again, I feel like do what you want as long as you're not imposing your will on any other living organism. But everything is living down to the water. You think you're drinking water that's just water or it's dead. No, it's alive. It's the reason why your body sit in mostly water as well. So everything is alive. Every single solitary blade of grass, the fabric you have on, everything is composed of atoms and atoms is alive. And So you treat everything and everyone with respect. You do on to others as you will want done on to you. And if you go on with this thing of the matters of good and evil being subjective, then explain how would you operate on this evil? You operating on this evil, let's go with vibration. It's only so high you can go. Certain astral planes you're not allowed in. Certain heaven-like frequencies you can't connect to. And I feel like that shows in itself it is a good and it, it, Naturalism. But naturalism or materialism, something still have to spawn about that. It's not just a matter of... That's it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, leave your input. Something you can offer perspective or even something creative or whatever you're, how you see it.
don't forget to like the video if you like the video comment share subscribe turn on post notifications DM me the link via x formerly known as twitter let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about follow me on twitch kick and rumble i'll see you on the next video man i'm out